getting into the meat of our, of our lesson about what is a zero phase What is a zero phase filter? Let's firstly define what that phase is. Every filter, every system, I'm using the word system interchangeably with filter here. Every system, H of E to the J omega, it has a phase function. And that phase function is just our angle of our DTFT. And in general, the DTFT's angle is gonna change. And up to now, we, we really haven't been very concerned about the phase function at all. We've been concerned about the gain function. We've been concerned about if the gain is high at a particular frequency and low at a particular frequency, then it's a filter and it passes certain frequencies and blocks other, filters, uh, other frequencies. It tells us if the filter is a low pass or a high pass or a band pass. But the phase does tell us one useful thing. It tells us if the filter messes up the shape of signals in the time domain. So to give a, a practical example of that, if we had in the time domain a system, an input signal that looked like this. So it's not, <laughs> so it's time domain, right? So it's really a bunch of these stems, I'm just approximating it with a continuous waveform. If you put that into a zero phase filter, if it's within clearly within the pass band, you'll get something out that looks very similar. If you put it into a linear phase filter, in other words, one in which its phase function is a linear function of, of omega, k is often negative, you might end up with something that looks like this. In other words, it's just a delay. And then if you put it through a nonlinear phase filter, theta of omega versus omega might look something like that. You might end up with something that looks like, like that. In other words, something that looks unrelated in the time domain to your original waveform. Does that matter? It depends. If you're trying to build a filter that just finds the presence or absence of, an, of a signal, you don't care what it looks like in the time domain. You only care what it looks like in the frequency domain. But if you are trying to create a, a filter that is for, let's say, a, um, where, the, where the shape of your signal matters, like an EKG waveform, then you want to have a linear phase filter. So in other words, if your signal only matters in the frequency domain, you only care if it's got energy at a particular frequency or it doesn't, nonlinear phase is great. Something like a telephone touch tone decoder, you only care if, if what those frequencies are. You don't care what it looks like on an oscilloscope, but something like a EKG, you care a lot about what it looks like. So an EKG will have linear phase filters, if they'll have a delay then, or zero phase filters if they have no delay, um, whereas a touch tone decoder will be nonlinear phase. Can I get a thumbs up on, on that if it makes sense to everybody? All right, so let's talk about the pluses and minuses of each of these things. So zero phase filters. So zero phase filters. Theta of omega equals zero. You've done a lab in which I asked you to tell me what would have to be true about your system transfer function in order for it to be zero phase. And Fawaz, what did you write down for that? What would it have? What would you have to say about your h of e to j e to the j omega if it's, which is in general a complex function of omega, for its phase to be equal to zero? What would have to be true about that filter? Uh, I'm not sure, sir. Well, what could you tell me about any complex number? What would have to be true in order for the phase of any complex number 
to be zero. So if I was to write down, say, three plus J2, does that have a zero phase? No. No. What would have to be different about this number to have it be zero phase? Um, it has to be purely real. Right, it has to be pre purely real. So now then someone else, um, uh, Charles, if H of E to the J omega is purely real, what does that tell me about H of N? What's the symmetry relationship that if we have a purely real H of E to the J omega, there has to be something true about H of N? Um, would H of N have to be purely or an even function or conjugate symmetric? Perfect, perfect. I'll say even, although it, it is true. It, it, it does have to be conjugate symmetric. But for what we're doing, our H of Ns are always real. So that just conjugate symmetric just breaks down into even. That's perfect. Okay. So for zero phase filters, we need to have an even H of N. H of N is purely even. So the good part of a zero phase is that It does not change the shape of a signal in the passband. Meaning, obviously, if it's if it's the zero phase filter is supposed to block a high frequency signal, it's going to block it. But even if it blocks it, it doesn't change its shape. It just reduces its amplitude. And it does not delay the signal at all. It doesn't delay it because the group delay is equal to minus the derivative of that phase function with respect to frequency. So if that phase function is equal to zero, then that derivative equals zero, and so the group delay is zero, and so there's no delay of any frequency. But there's some bad points. And the biggest bad point is that it is non-causal, which means we can't build it in the real time world. And it's non-causal. I mean, if we said that directly follows from the fact that H of N is even. So if we're graphing H of N, versus n, in order for it to be even out here, it must have samples to the left of n equals zero, which means it's non-causal, which means it starts to react before it's been hit by a signal. It somehow knows what's in the future. And that's not necessarily an impossibly bad thing. You can process signals offline. If you're doing military intelligence, for instance, you can record a signal and then analyze it offline. And you can analyze it with a, with a non-causal signal, but you can't do it in real time. So that's the only, actually, that is the only bad part about a zero phase filter. So they're great, except for this non-causality. So we're gonna make a 